The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. This is what God can do. And this is what we got to call people back to, that faith in Him, that optimism, that expectation of good things, because God wants to do us good. In fact, I've learned He's able to do the exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think. And when you're trying to fulfill His plan and purpose for your life, no power on earth can stop you. E.W. Jackson describes the coming revival in this sweet land of liberty, next on Life Today. Betty and Nita Jordan invite these people to join our guest, E.W. Jackson, who wrote this tremendous book, Sweet Land of Liberty. And the sad fact is we're about to lose Mm -hmm. liberty in this great land if we don't take the action that he talks about in this book. And I have never read a clearer explanation of what must happen and why it's important. E.W., thank you for writing this book. Would you tell our viewers some of the things that are in the book that you will go into great detail and clarification of, but it's very simple. It's as simple a read, but as great and clear of truth as I have ever seen presented. And I I could wish that every person in this nation would read this. By the way, the black community and, and minority community has resisted the effects of slavery throughout history, and they talk about it as though it's still on them, and it's not, and it's opportunity, which we all all know. But don't you think that the black community and many in the minority community and many in the poor areas are being used to believe lies that lead to their continuing and increasing demise? They are going into a more horrible, indescribably damaging, deadly situation. We, that's what you seem to make clear. Well, and James, thank thank you, and thank, thank you, Betty, for having me on to talk about this, because this is critically important. I've said it this way. We are being taught to obsess over what someone else is doing to us, real or imagined, when we ought to be obsessing over what God wants to do through us. That's good. We are looking in the rearview mirror, but the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. It doesn't say where there is no backward gazing, but where there is no vision. And so this obsession with the past, I referred to it in the uh, earlier program. Uh, my ancestors got here, thank God. And people said, well, what do you mean by that? Well, think about Joseph. Joseph didn't spend time in Egypt mad at Pharaoh, mad at Potiphar, mad over how his brothers. He spent time figuring out what God had for him to do and doing it. And so I would say, number one, it's not the color of our skin. It's God. Put God first. I tell people, my identity is not in my skin color. It's not in my race. My identity is in Jesus Christ. And this country's identity, by the way, people talk about identity politics. This country's identity was enunciated in the Declaration of Independence when, the, when Thomas Jefferson, the founding fathers, wrote that all, we, all rights come from Almighty God. We are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. That, I tell people, that not only set a legal foundation for our independence, but a cultural and spiritual foundation for our liberty as well. Coming back to God is the number one issue. And then I talk a lot about family because the family has just been devastated in our country as a result of a lot of weird ideas about sexual morality. The black community has suffered the most because the welfare state and the government have become God trying to replace family. And as a result, we've got in, I was in Chicago not too long ago, 
82% out of wedlock birth rate in the black community in Chicago. People don't want to talk about that when they talk about crime. They want to talk about racism. They don't want to talk about the breakdown of the family, not having a father in the home, which, by the way, experiencing father care and resenting my foster parents and not having my father there. Once my father stepped in and said, listen, boy, <laughs> this is the way it's going to be, it made all the difference in the world. What happens when you're raised by the streets? when you're raised by gangs, when you're told being a man is killing somebody rather than being a man is taking responsibility for your own actions and doing something positive, contributing something to your family, to your community. So coming back to God and rebuilding families, those are just two of the things that we really need to focus on as a country in order to secure America's future. You gotta be amazed that the people are still trying to uh, uh, protect the innocent, and protect the people at great risk when they are themselves being accused. It, we really and truly can see all the wheels coming off. But don't we still have, without having to go to war, civil war or any kind of war, we've got to try to protect this country against those who don't so much wish to destroy us as take us over. And sadly, they have taken us over from the inside, just like Khrushchev said years ago, all the way back in the 60s and 70s. He said they would take us and would not have to fire at us. We would fall into the hands like overripe fruit. And we just waited for Pharaoh to take care of everybody and promised to take care of everybody. And too many in the black community community have believed that. And now then they have become the subject slaves to the very system that cannot keep up with the demands or the illegal immigrants that come in. And then we take care of them. We guarantee them everything. It is something that no one on this earth can fulfill that only man helping man and loving one another and loving and caring your neighbor, caring for your neighbor is the only way we deal with these problems. You can't ever find a Pharaoh or a Caesar or a Herod or a king that can do it. You you have to become responsible citizens. And you pointed out, okay, could we begin to correct the pendulum if we would put principal people and the principles that you talk about so clearly here, if we put principal leaders back in place, could we correct our course? There's no question about it. Uh, look, we have been built on a foundation of imperfect people, and we know they were imperfect, but they had a vision that I really believe God gave them and that they were devoted to. I, I've, I've read most of the biographies, all the biographies of the founding fathers. And yes, they were flawed, but they were committed to certain ideas for which they were prepared to give their lives, James. And we need leadership today that says, it's not about my political career. It's not about my fame. It's not about my power. It's about preserving the liberty that George Washington laid his life on for on the on the line for, and then when he had the ability to become a king, said that's I'm not interested. I wasn't fighting so that I could have power. I was fighting so the American people could have liberty. And if we could have leaders like that today, if we would vote for people like that, who are looking past the superficial skin color and and and, and gender, and but just looking at wanting people to be able to fulfill their God-given potential and ability in the greatest nation that the world has ever known for that, I, I, we, can, we can have a future that is brighter than anything we've known. You know, um, uh, John Winthrop saw a shining city on a hill. And I say, I really believe God wants to, to us to shine brighter than we've ever shown before. And we can, but we've got to come back to him and we've got to have leaders. Righteousness exalts a nation. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. We've got to have leaders who believe that and are willing to say to the American people, let's go, let's make the future brighter than it's ever been. Let's come back to the principles that made us great. Well, you're telling us in this book to return to the truth that sets us free. And the foundational principles in the Word of God and that our founders understood and that were established in the Constitution because we're a constitutional republic that can be modified yes. and leaders chosen by democratic process, not by mobocracy or mob rule, but by constitutional rule. We have scrapped the Constitution. We have not only begun to scrap the Second Amendment, but we've already sadly scrapped the First Amendment. And one of the things you point out here is that a liberal, anti-God, anti-truth, anti-founders principles has in that liberal media kept the American people from knowing the truth, has perpetuated lies on the American people.
has ignored to ever present the truth. We got to thank God for every news network, every newscaster, every anchor, every person in the media, in any form, press or speech that will speak the truth and defend it. They are risking their lives because the most threatened people on the planet are the people who still believe what God says, the people who say sex can be redefined, gender can be redefined. We can take over education and control and leave God totally out. We can push everything out that the founder said matters, and that's what they're doing. And the media continues to perpetuate that while the few in the media that tell the truth are not being heard. The American people, if they will read this and other people who are telling the truth and spread the word because the media won't, we've got to get the word out. I could wish and pray, God, I do pray it, that every person that cares about anything that really matters, like marriage and family. Betty and I have been married 60 years, been in ministry 60 years. Only a miracle could give the product of a rape, a boy without a father, without a home, miraculously even allowed to live and grew up in total poverty to have a wife like this, have 25 grandchildren now, about to have number 26, and to have such a blessed life because of God, because of God. It's a miracle of God, and it is this God that E.W. talks about so clearly and putting those principles back in place that will restore the stability and the security and the future of the nation, and the media is not going to carry that. That's why I'm saying, look, let's read. Let's go to the stream. That's one of the websites that tells you the truth with all the great thinkers pouring truth into it. Stream.org. Go there every day. All these diverse people across all denominational lines, academic lines, who know the truth truth, and it's irrefutable. History confirms it. The positive and the negative aspects of doing or failing to do it. It's all there. Please get the word out. E.W., what do you want God to do with this book? You know, I, I wrote the book, James, hoping that people all over America would read it and realize, you know, think about this. Satan used grievance in heaven to cause a rebellion in the perfect place. Perfect. And yet he sowed grievance into the hearts of people and, and the hearts of these angels. Got a third of them upset enough that they rebelled against Almighty God who loved them with an unfathomable love. And, and now we've got the same thing happening in our country today. And I wanted people to see me as an American of African descent. I don't call myself an African-American. I'm an American. Mm -hmm. I happen to be of African descent. Some of us are Irish or Italian descent or whatever. But I wanted them to see my love and passion for this country as a place where I see kids who are now dying in the streets of our cities, James, who could grow up to be doctors and lawyers. They could do anything in this country. And instead, they're being told that you can't because of racism. And yet the very things that could be done to help them be rescued are not being done, like educational opportunity, school choice, getting more police officers to help prevent the crimes that are taking lives. You know, James, since the defund the police movement, we've had 322 innocent young children, not gangbangers, innocent children killed in the streets of our cities mm. because the police are no longer there to deter crime. And in Chicago, for example, 95, 90 percent of those murders are unsolved. Murdered so children. Sad, sad. There, there, there are answers, and but, but the only thing we're told is it's all racism. Well, no, because if somehow it's all racism, it's, it missed me, it missed my son, it missed my children, and it's missing people all over this country who are no, taking advantage of the opportunities because they're there. But there are certain things that we've got to impress upon people. You know, I say this one other thing: in order to mislead people, not only do you have to indoctrinate them. You got to censor the truth. Yeah. You got to give them the lie, and then you got to censor the truth. Because if they start to hear the truth, they'll say, well, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. the, the, the lie's not holding water here. Uh, and so we've got to really be committed to the idea that we're going to support the stream, the Every outlet that is getting the truth out there, we're going to put it out there. I'm on American Family Radio. We've got to have truth tellers out there 
dealing with the fact that people are being indoctrinated and telling them you're being lied to, you're being misled. And frankly, I, I, I say that to the black community every time I have an opportunity because I really believe that that's what's, being, that's what's happened through this leftist ideology that has really put them in a subservient position by telling them the white man won't let them and racism won't let them. And that's a lie yeah. because God opens doors and no man can close them. And there's so many things that the individual can do. I'm so yes. I'm so hopeful when I see these parents finally going to the school boards and they're Amen. standing up and say, hey, I want my kids back. Amen. They belong to me. God gave them to me to nurture and to grow up. And I'm so proud of the parents that are doing that. I pray that they're doing it under the leadership of God, too. You Amen. know, because anything without God's not going to stand. But right. there's, there's hope here where you can do it in your own communities, in our leadership in our communities. People get involved because you care about the future of, the, of this world and this country that God gave us. If the product of rape, the product of foster care in a broken home. And, and here again, there are millions of people like us. Only in America is it possible. And we've got to get that message That's across right. to all these That's kids who are being misled. Right. When I got up, you had read the content of this book and you were so excited. What excited you about it? that made you want me to understand the importance of what E.W. shared? Well, for, for one thing was his testimony, too, where he, I mean, people will say, well, I, I can't do anything like this man or this la this woman or somebody because I don't have the education. I don't have the, the, the wealth. I don't have everything that's just perfect for me to do what I need to do. But you came from nothing, basically. James came from nothing. And God took those Amen. very unlikely two people. And look what he's doing. And if God hadn't sent this young man and someone that didn't grow up in the church like I did, if he hadn't sent him into my life to show me what a real relationship is with Jesus, Praise I would God. not have accepted him. I would have not. I'd just been, I'd have still been playing church Amen. and not getting blessed and not being fulfilled at all. But that relationship means so much. And just to read just the clarity from your, like I said earlier, the clarity of your heart, reaching out to people and saying, it's so simple in many ways. Just commit to God and love Amen. Him. And that light will shine through you. You don't have to light it. God lights it through you when it becomes real to us. And James, I've been married, my wife and I have been married 52 years. Wow. And here again, I come from a broken home. Sure. So this is, you're, you're so right, Betty. This is what God can do. And this is what we got to call people back to, that faith in him, that optimism, that expectation of good things, because God wants to do us good. In fact, I've learned he's able to do the exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think. And when you're trying to fulfill his plan and purpose, for your life, no power on earth can stop you. That's what EW is trying to give you step by step how to get back to. I have never seen it presented more clearly, never. I'll send it to you if, you, if you'll do something. You know, uh, we have been putting God's loving arms around the overlooked for the last more than 30 years and uh, saving lives, millions of lives. And we're in what we call our mission feeding and this is the last week where we're raising the funds to feed, think about it, 350,000 children and family members that are starving. And we have found them in the area of their need and set up the feeding distribution. But we have to have your support to pay for and get the food there. I, I wanna ask you to help us this last week. If you could give a gift of 30, 50 or $100, we could feed three, five or 10 children I want you to listen to Tammy Trent share not just her heart, but God's heart. And then I want you to see if you could be an answer to prayer and you could become the miracle that will save someone's life. Watch closely. The things that I've seen, um, the things that I've gotten to experience, have been emotional. There's been some good days and there's been some bad days. Um, my favorite days are when I get to go into a village and, and serve the children, especially when I get to sit down and feed them a bowl of food that they get 
every day. And gosh, what an incredible moment that really is, knowing that uh, in that place, in that moment, I'm privileged to be a part of bringing them life through a bowl of food. And then you get in the car on the next day and you travel hours uh, to get to a clinic like this, only to um, sit in a place like this and to watch this precious little girl fight for her life because she doesn't have that one bowl of food every day. Her body's shutting down. Um, she is dying. Um, and I wonder how long she has to live. I think that if she was in a village where there was a feeding program set up, how her life would be so very different. And I've seen the power in just one bowl of food, something so incredibly simple that brings life to so many hundreds of thousands of children. It's hard to watch any child die knowing that there's something that we can do to help prevent that death. Tammy, I know you watch the shows and you check in. Thank you for you putting God's arms around so many children all over the third world and all over Africa. Betty, I know when, I don't, I don't know if you noticed, but that little child there at the mm -hmm. first one, Tammy referred to feeding him and that little child put that spoon up to his mouth. Just look, look at that. Look at that little bowl, little food. How, how could we not want to put food in that child's mouth when we can and know that it would keep them from ending up in that, in that malnutrition clinic? But Betty, do you know what keeps them from going there? We start feeding them when we find them and they're starving and we set up the feeding lines and the feeding programs. And that's why we're asking you to help us right now feed 350,000 children like that that we have found to feed. And do you know how the malnutrition clinics came to be? We said, we're gonna give it one more shot, whatever it takes. And, and you established those clinics, you, your love, God's love through you. you. We do everything we can to do what? To share the life and love of God in demonstration, not just in talk, but in deed. And that's what we're asking you to do. It's really what EW and I have been talking to you about mm -hmm. doing today about literally changing the direction of this nation to come back to the freedom that made us great and keeps us great and gives us the ability to be a blessing because we're so blessed by the reality of freedom. Now then we are blessed. There are many of you right now who have the ability to help us feed hundreds of children. Do you know that for 30, 50, or $100, we can feed three, five, or 10 children for the next months? And we've got 350,000? I mean, think about it. Think what a thousand dollars will do. Think what, if it, could you help us feed 10 with 100? Whatever you can do, we have some gifts to send you to say thank you because we always want to put in your hand something that will go into your heart and that will refresh you spiritually and bless you and your family. But you are giving the greatest gift. You're giving those precious children. Jesus called the least of these, the unnoticed. But when you do this, you are my sheep and you will prove to be my disciples by the way you do it together in supernatural unity. This is the last week. Would you right now, please, go get your bank card, your checkbook, call that number or go online. If you write a check, call us and tell us what you're putting in the mail. Make the biggest gift you can. You are giving life. Go online, use your bank card like a check. That's how you should always use them. And we have gifts to send you, but remember this, you really are giving the greatest gift. And we're gonna tell them where it came from, the love of God, through Jesus. And in demonstration, they're going to see that love and come to trust him. You can count on it. Thank you so much for putting God's arms around someone. Thank you. Across the continent of Africa, children are suffering, facing severe malnutrition and even death. With food reserves gone and many areas experiencing severe famine, we urgently need to replenish supplies to keep feeding the 350,000 children who are counting on us. Through Life's Mission Feeding Outreach, your gift of love can be an answer to prayer for a hurting and hungry child in their time of need. 
Call now with your life-saving gift of $30, $50, or $100 to help feed and care for three, five, or ten children for three full months. With your gift of any amount, we'll send you 365 Days of Courage. Filled with scriptures and words of encouragement, this daily devotional will give you the confidence that comes from knowing how God sees you. Take courage in Christ's love and be ready to conquer each day. With your gift of $100 or more, please request a blessing framed art. This beautiful wall art will grace your home or office and serve as a daily reminder of God's blessing and kindness over your family. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our inspiring bronze sculpture, Consider the Birds, inspired by Jesus' words in Matthew 6:26. This is the last week. Please call, write, or make your gift online. James, Betty, I know your heart for the people of Africa. I know, Betty, how you've just always connected your heart with the mothers here in these communities. James, your heart for the children, the children like little buddy that so often are the ones that pay the biggest price, that suffer so dearly. And that is what we're seeing right now. We're seeing crisis at the level from a malnutrition and, and near starvation perspective here in Angola like I have never seen before. We cannot bring an end to this crisis. We cannot save the lives we need to save without you. We need you to open your hearts today. So please, I'm asking you to dial that number on your screen or to get online and to give the very best gift that you can give today to give the gift of life by giving the gift of food this uh, framed picture bless our family and this scripture will bless you you have you've just blessed someone's life by giving the greatest gift you're giving life by giving them the food thank you make the best gift you can this last week we have gifts to send you and i will send you if you'd like to have it e.w jackson's book sweet land of liberty Without a move of God that's going to come through all of us, we're going to lose the liberty yeah. that was purchased at great price and is precious. I think we're going to see the greatest awakening in history. And E.W., I think you're a part of inspiring that awakening, and I love you with all my heart, my brother. And we're going to do our best to get the family of God to stand up in supernatural unity yeah. with one head Christ and get his arms around the world that he died to redeem. And I'm standing with you, James. We're going to do that together. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you so much for being a friend of life. Thanks for watching life today. And like I've said many times, thanks for sharing life because that's what we do together. And I mean, we do it together. Thank you. In 2008 of June, I was diagnosed with uh, terminal cancer, stage four kidney cancer. Diego Mesa overcame cancer through natural remedies. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.